All right, guys. Welcome back again. Miss Walker over here, and we are going to look and see what we need to think about when we're adding color to something we're drawing from life, to a still life. Now, the great news is, is you've got photographs, so instead of it being a live object, which it normally would be, you can zoom in and you can really get a good idea of what types of things are happening with the colors. And that's important because your apple begins to look much more realistic or your banana if you're taking care to put you know, where it gets a little yellow, where it gets a little pink, where it gets a little dark, maybe with some purple. You can use whatever you want to do these particular colors. So if you like crayons better, if you like maybe watercolors, or if you like colored pencils, I know colored pencils tend to be pretty popular in here, then you are welcome to use those. I'm going to use crayons because I feel like I can blend better and I feel like I get more of what I want. Of course, I say that and I'm trying to find a red. All right, so I'm going to get a base red in the places where I feel like it's got a brighter red. And I'm going to try to color in the same direction that the lines are happening in the apple. And that's really where I see it being lighter. And some over here. And this is really, really light. It's very, almost white. It's reflecting. Okay, so I've got my most light places kind of thought out. All right, now I want to go and get the places that have that yellowish tint. So that nice golden color that shows where it's been changing. Mm, we'll go with this one. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to go ahead and place that down. And you'll notice where the colors go over each other. They start to do a really nice blend. The beauty of this is that you are going to get that with your crayons or your colored pencils. And it will make it look more like the real thing. Because on the real thing, there aren't those big stiff separations like polka dots or stripes. It's a very gradual, variated, variegated sort of thing. So I'm going to come in with my red, and I'm letting it go into the yellow some. So I'm letting those lines kind of proceed as we go. I do notice there is a little bit of almost kind of magenta over here in the light red. So I'm going to go get that really quickly because I don't want to forget it. And then I'm going to come back to this. It's got almost a little red-orange tint. So to fill that out and to help flesh it out, if you will, which, of course, you know, the inside of an apple is called flesh, to help get that and make it look more robust, I'm going to come in with my red-orange in the places that I need it. Okay. So now I've got the basic parts of that. I have some yellow up here by the stem, but it's a yellow that almost goes a little tan, a little brown. So instead of adding orange like I did below, I'm going to get a brown to come in and really add out that shade. And you'll notice I'm trying to go in a direction similar to what I'm doing with the apple's round parts. If it you know, looks like it's going out like a fan or like your fingers when you spread them, then that's the way I, your lines ought to be going. Might need another brown. It might be a little bit more. There we go. All right. So we've got that part. Let's see. Okay. So a slightly darker red I think will be helpful, and then we can go get our real dark spots. So I'm using maroon. You might have a burgundy or you might have a deep red. I picked maroon because it's got a nice dark quality, but it is still almost a little bit of a 
purplish tint to it, which this apple seems to have. And I'm being careful for places that I left with the light color because I don't want to all of a sudden get rid of my light. I want those to still be there. So that you will be able to understand the reflection on the apple. And that lets me know I may need to take the yellow out a little bit in some strands. Because it does kind of look like it's coming out right there. Let's make sure that's in focus. There we go. And then I'm going to come and start getting the basis of this color over here. And I can definitely tell it's going to get a lot darker over here. But I'm going to do it by adding purple and black, which purple is a fantastic color usually to shade your red. And that will give us a nice deep tone, almost like it's been bruised. Although in this case, it's just the shadow. It's not, a, not an inedible apple. All right. So there we go. We've got the basic colors of our apple. Now, I do want to come in and get those real deep shadows. So here and here and here. I was kind of looking to see what I had available. I have a black, I have a blue violet, and really like a plum. Let's see what we can find. Ah, we'll go with what we have. Okay. So I'm thinking about it as an area of dark. I'm not thinking about it as just a piece. I'm thinking about it as like this is almost like a shadow, like a shape that's happening. And it helps if you treat it like that so that it becomes what it is in life or in the picture as opposed to like, oh, well, I drew a line right there. I hope you like it. It's not about whether you like it or not. It's about what you're actually seeing. So some people will say, draw what you see, not what you think you see, meaning that you've got to pay a little bit closer attention with your eyes so that you can be successful. All right, so that's a good first go. I do think it needs a little bit more depth. So I'm going to come in and add some depth with my second purple. This is a blue-violet. And then to really hit the deep spots, I'm going to come in with a black. And black is a very powerful color when you're using it. You want to start by just adding a little. So getting it just a little bit on there and then seeing. And if you need more, go up and add a little bit on top. But if you go straight in, you might completely darken your color and it might not be the way you want it to be. And you can't take back. You can always add, but you can't take back. Erasers um, don't really to crayon very well. You might smear some off with the top section, but it's not actually erasing in the same way it would a pencil. So you just got to be a little bit more careful with it. Okay, so here's this part. I'm going to come in and get the stem, which seems to be pretty dark brown except for some spots. Looks like it's got a little bit of depth here and here. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I would follow that same idea, that same pattern on my other things. Right now on the projector screen, this is looking pretty, uh, I'm just kind of pinkish. So I'm going to help it out by giving it a little bit more red on top. 
just to help pull that bright red out. And hopefully that will make it a little bit closer to what I see. Yeah, that does a little bit better. All right, so that's how you go and add color to your still life, paying attention to those places where it changes, paying attention to how it's going dark in some areas, how it's light in some areas, and really being thoughtful about what you're doing crown rise. Remember, you can always come and test the color on the back to see what it's going to do. And you can even test on the back to see when you're blending them what kind of effect you're going to get so that you have a better idea. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Great to see y'all.